faith, firearms, and freedom. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Welcome to another episode of Armed Lutheran Radio, a show about guns, hunting, competitive shooting, and the natural right of self-defense, and what God's Word says about the issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran. This is episode number 370. And uh, thank you all so much for making Armed Lutheran Radio a part of your week again this week. Um, This is episode 370. It is our July online hangout for July... Of 2023, and in just a few minutes, I'll be bringing in some uh, members of the Reformation Gun Club, the people who make the show possible. Um, the Reformation Gun Club, for those of you who don't know, uh, is our membership site, and um, we are not sponsored. We don't have any advertising. We rely on the the great people who are members of our Reformation Gun Club and their annual and monthly dues that help pay the bills and keep the lights on here at Armed Lutheran Radio. If you would like to be a part of a future online hangout, if you would like to find out all the benefits of being a member, check out armedlutheran.us slash gun club and um, sign up today for as little as 15, 17 per year. Uh, You can get all kinds of cool benefits, access to lots of exclusive content, including last week's episode, episode 369. And, um, invitations to hangouts like this and to hang out with some really cool people who I'm going to bring in now. Let's see. We've got six folks in here. Start bringing them in. There we go. We got Stuart who's hanging out on the... On the steps of uh, where are, that looks like, what are you in Constantinople? What are you doing? <laughs> you can't hear me. Dan is here with us. David Scott is with us. Steve Clifford has toys, apparently. That's very cool. And Scott Van Dorsten is also with us. Donnie Ross is joining us as well. How is everyone? I can't hear anyone. Oh, good. There we go. Nobody was talking. Nobody was talking. (laughs) I'm good. Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you now. Excellent. Excellent. So um, there we go. Dan missed our last hangout. So let's start with you, sir. What have you been up to? Um, You're out of focus. There it goes. There it goes. (laughs) Oh, it's... (laughs) Um. Oh, geez. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> last weekend was a um, a uh, mid-range rifle match. Ooh. Uh, hadn't reconnected with some old friends. Okay. And they're like, uh, you know, Dan, come, Dan, come, Dan, come, you know, and I told, okay. And you uh, finally gave in to the peer pressure. I gave in to the peer pressure. <laughs> I did. Loaded up some twenty five caliber and went to Butner. Okay. And uh, not too bad, okay? Everything held together at 600 yards pretty well. Okay. Kind of finished in the middle of the pack. And so I'm like, I'm like, man, I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, Is I'll that take your first it. time shooting a long range match. No, no, no. Or I, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, I think the last time I was up there was like '06 or okay. something. You know, because I mean, um, I was still heavily involved in the Boy Scouts. You know, and you can't do everything. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. Locally, going up. Here we go. Locally, I've been, uh, you know, like on Tuesday nights, I've been, you know, uh, at this uh, the local club meetup, and uh, 
you know, they're all about, they're all about pistol training in that. And, uh, you know, we've been doing these different qualification courses, uh, you know, just for the giggles of it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago was the FBI small arms qualification course. Okay. And, uh, you know, that was actually, that was really pretty fun. It, it, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of fire two rounds, change magazines, fire two more, um, you know, fire four rounds here, fire four rounds there in 70 seconds, you know, with a reload, you know, a lot, a, a lot of stuff that you really never do, you, you know, and, and unless it's, unless it's uh, like at a match, or something like this. Sorry, I was distracted by David's background. <laughs> I will not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, Simpsons. It, man, it's looking like it's looking like Steve's got a worthy rifle for a long range match. Looking like Scott's got something. Yeah, it's worthy for a. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, Kevin has not been with us. I don't, Kevin, you haven't been with us in one of these hangouts before, I don't believe. So say hello to the gang. You've been a member for a while. Say hello, introduce yourself and, and tell us what you've been up to. Oh, his microphone is not working. So Mike, well, all right, Kevin, well, you get your, your uh, oh, there he goes. Okay. So he's, not, yeah. there we go. Yeah, I'm not real good at this uh, Zoom stuff. <laughs> I, I never had to, you know, work remotely. I had to show up for work, so I never learned how to use this stuff. You know, don't feel you're by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are are uh, used to it now after many moons of doing this, and I work remotely at home, so I do this all the time, not with Zoom, but with with uh, Microsoft Teams, so which is very similar and more annoying. Um, <laughs> so tell everybody what it, where where are you and what do you do for uh, for a living? If you want to share that info and um, and what uh, what have you been up to lately, especially if it's gun related? Uh, I am in Marion, Iowa. Um, I uh, am a retired. Uh, materials and process engineer and uh i haven't done anything but carry around a weapon for uh, a long time so i haven't done anything fancy or special so all right marion i'm trying to remember where marion is my my it's a suburb of uh, cedar rapids Waterloo. okay well, great my parents lived in Webster City for a while before I was okay. born, and my dad preached at a parish there, and that was obviously many, many moons ago. I've never, well, I've been, I've been to Iowa for a an IDPA match, and that was the longest drive I've ever, well, it wasn't longer than the drive to back home to North Carolina to visit family, but it felt like it. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Mike, um, what are you up to? You missed our last hangout. You had, uh, more important stuff going on, obviously. So what have, what have you been up to? Not much, primarily work and <clears throat> busy season at work right now. And, uh, just trying to help out with some stuff at church, but otherwise just getting caught up and yeah. Otherwise, not too much. Nothing firearms related. I need to get to the range. Haven't been there in, oh gosh, <laughs> two, three months at least, if not more. <laughs> My neighbor invited me to go with him to the range. He's a member out at the club where I used to have a membership. And he was like, I may go out there today. And it was like 104. And I was like, um, that sounds great. <laughs> Call me when it's about 30 degrees cooler. <laughs> Exactly. It's been a killer. Exactly. It really has. Yeah. 
Donnie, how are you, sir? Doing well. Um, a lot has happened since I've been on here. Most notable, um, I go out and shoot through my pistols. Right. Um, that was a long time ago. It was just before you, we had the hangout. It didn't happen. And the next week, I was up fishing, Montana fishing. But then Peter, uh, my son Peter, who's also a member here, um, he actually got a summer vintage on Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. So he's got one more week left there, and he comes back, and then he starts his second year of seminary. But uh, and oh, and and I had uh, abdominal surgery, and you should have that done three days before Easter because I had no appetite on all the good Easter food we had to eat. Oh, so no. let's just say I no longer have an Audi and I now have an Innie. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad it went well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Bent was going to be here it, with uh, us, but, it, but he had surgery yesterday, I think it was. So he's not able to be with us or he... He said he was going to join us if he felt like it, but I told him not to really, not to push it. He had, I think it was sinus surgery. So, prayers for him and his recovery. And I'm, Donnie, I'm glad you're, you're recovered and doing well. All right, let's yep, get to. I, I, I got, I got uh, you know, I've been fishing and I'm back to where I can lift almost anything. So. No, but uh, Easter was was uh, the pastor actually brought me communion in the pew, <laughs> and you missed out on all the food. That stinks. Well, you'll have to double down next time. Yeah, <laughs> Scott, how are you? I'm doing well. How's uh, the shop? The shop's going well. It's it's still slowly building, but uh, getting a steady influx. I had a fellow. Scout rifle fan, Lutheran brother, and hopefully soon to be a member of the Reformation Gun Club come through town. Mike, if you're listening, hi. Uh, he dropped off a couple of rifles for me to throw some iron sights on for him. Nice. And uh, had a few other people finding me through that. And uh, I just got done doing a uh, converting a... Uh, Smith & Wesson model 19-2 uh, went from a 6-inch barrel to a 3.5-inch barrel. A uh, guy wants to use it for concealed carry. So I cut it down, duplicate the uh, Smith & Wesson crown, and install an XD-style front sight base. And so that's actually went pretty well. And then... Uh, I've been at the range here and there test firing guns. And uh, I was RSO for the long range Saturday last couple weekends ago. So our local gun club, we have I'm one of the RSOs out there. And we have Thursdays and Saturday, we call it Saturday on the Hill, because the long range is up on a hill. Right. And nice. uh, so I was RSO out there and I took a, a buddy's gun out to shoot because I really don't have a gun that's set up for long range. Most of mine are short, compact scout rifles. Scout rifles. Which I've taken out to 500 yards. <laughs> and once you know how to do it, it's not that hard. But it's really not a it's not a long range gun. So took his. But I think next time, because everybody keeps telling me I got to come out, I got to come out. I'm like, fine, I'm just going to come out with my scout rifle and watch you guys <laughs> cry when I hit the targets. <laughs> Cool. Steve, tell us about the toy you got in front of you there. How are you, by the way? I am well, thank you. And uh, I'm out on my back porch tonight because my everyone inside is sleeping already. I hope the uh, unruly bugs aren't coming through the audio too too much. <laughs> but uh, no, my my thing lately has been the, uh, this project. I've got. Actually, I have two YouTube channels, but one is devoted to firearms. Okay. And I've been working for the last year and a half now trying to trying to work out how to get 
a uh, a scout rifle out to a thousand yards. Okay. So I when you figure that out, that tell out. Scott. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, <laughs> Scott and I, I, if you remember last time, I, I met Scott. I've been at Whittington Center twice with Scott. We've shot, we've shot together. Uh, he and his wife out there just having a great time doing some scout rifle classes. But this scout rifle is the one that I brought out there. But I've made some changes to it, most notably just put on a scope that is capable of doing a lot longer range work. So a few weeks ago, I, I finally got it into the condition that I thought would actually work and uh, put it to the test. And, and I shot a, uh, <laughs> shot a class and then a mentor match all the way out to 1,200 yards with this thing. And, um, yeah, it, it'll do it. it. It's a lot more comfortable inside 800, but out to 800, this thing I am very confident with out Past 800, it can do it, but not nearly with the confidence that I would like. So it's it's just it's tremendous fun. I, I really feel it's been a, a successful venture. Awesome. All right. David, how hey, are you, sir? Hey, sir. I'm going to mute Steve because i got some feedback. For yeah, you. doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Late, latest gun related things uh, won fifty dollars at the Glock match in Kentucky Ooh. back in June. Yeah, random. <laughs> but I never um, win anything, so I'm, I'm envious. <laughs> um, and the one thing I did win, I had left early and didn't get to claim. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that on one of your uh, podcasts way back in the day. Yep, that's been a while. So how did you do at the match? Um, well, I had two entries. One, uh, so my my par time that I'm trying to work with is 100 seconds uh, for the match. Uh, right. That's not fantastic. It's, it's solidly in the middle of, of the pack. Right. Um, but um, so I had one, I think it was 85 or an 87, uh, and then a 115. So... A little slow on one and a little better on the other. Okay. Which uh, which Glocks are you using? So the Glock 34 was the one where I did better. Okay. Um, that's that's my Makes gun sense. that I've been I've got really well dialed in, uh, and I trust it to be dialed in. Um, this was the first match I shot a 43x. Uh, and so I was a little slower on that because I wasn't quite sure. Um, you know, so the plate racks did me in for that extra 15, 20 seconds. It, cause it took me just to be comfortable that I was going to hit it and it was going to place where I wanted it. Um, I just didn't shoot it confidently. So, um, but it, it's a nice gun. Um, oh, yeah. and I have, since had it to the range a couple of times and it's it's pretty well dialed in now so i shouldn't I be the 43x hesitant. was a is 43x is the longer grip right yes yeah it's longer than a 43 yeah, yeah. okay it's sort of yeah. like the night so the basically all the x stuff the 19x the 43x they did the x the, they did the reverse of what would seem to make sense for concealed carry and Instead of having the full length with the shorter grip, they did the shorter length with the full grip, so it's harder to conceal. It doesn't make their sense. naming convention and random number generators have very high similarity. Glock perfection. Um, I yeah. actually like the forty six. I'm not a big Glock fan, but I actually do like the forty six. I'm sorry, the forty three X. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's great. Um, I have a Hollow Sun five hundred seven. Yeah. Day on it. Especially, um, I mean, I have large hands, so having a larger grip, you know, it, it is quite beneficial to me. Right. That yeah, it sense. feels a lot like my 19s. Um, yeah. You know, so it, you know, which are also pretty well dialed in. Um, it, but it seems like it's it, balanced. It, just... it seems like it's balanced a little better than the um, M&P, uh, the small ones, the uh, Shield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting thing my wife is a lefty and mm -hmm. so if she shoots the shield 
it hits on her hand, the, you know, the swell that's supposed to help you register your fingers, mm -hmm. it hits on her hand funny. And so oh. she's never been comfortable shooting a shield. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's why we don't have any of those at home. But um, the, uh, you know, but that, that was the big thing. Have an interesting class coming up. Dan, you mentioned shooting uh, the, uh, the qualifiers. Um, that, that's of high interest to me. Um, but we've got a class coming up for our church security team. Um, we're having, we have a, a group called Triad Solutions, I think it's the name of it, out of Florida. Uh, and they're doing a class on how to do a gun handling in a crowd. Ooh. So specifically how to do that um, with, you know, so for example, to index the gun here or to index in the Sewell uh, position, um, which I had read about, but I had never used in a competition uh, setting. Uh, but the I, I took the class back in March, first time, uh, and we liked it so much. We're bringing it out to our church. They've already filled one uh 38 positions in the first class and have opened up the second class that day nice. because it's so, um, yeah. Uh, so they're going to do that at our church. Uh, and then there's going to be later on in August, there's going to be a mock trial. Uh, U.S. Law Shields doing a, a thing where they're bringing in an attorney and uh, they're going to do a like a case, um, a self-defense case. Um, that ought to be really good. Um, Very cool. The U.S. Law Shield attorney goes to our church. Um, so the connections. He's he's setting that up. Well, it, it's an odd thing, but he chose to come to our church because we're rather active in those circles. <laughs> um, that's a, it's it's weird to say that somebody came to church because of your stance on gun on gun uh, firearms, but the, the yep. Lord works in mysterious ways. Yeah. Finished up your book, uh, Duty to Defend, uh, reading oh. uh, a, little, a couple of weeks ago. Awesome. So, so that was nice. Um, Great. Yeah, I was just reading a little bit of it along uh, uh, as part of my quiet time in the morning. Um, awesome. Just an extra chapter of that every once in a while. Hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Oh, I did. That. Good deal. All right, Stuart, where where are you, or where is this this uh, backdrop you've got behind you? This is it. That's the Lutheran Cathedral in Helsinki. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. The Czar paid for it back in the 1850s. Okay. Uh, I haven't done anything. I keep meaning to go join a gun club around here, and I haven't got around to it. Of course, it's, it's sort of like you. It's a little bit warm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the heat index when I came in a little bit ago, it was still 102 or something like that. Yeah, it is, it is what it is. Walk outside and start swimming in your own sweat. That's that's the one thing I like about Texas. It yeah, it's it feels like you've walked into an oven, but it doesn't feel like you can't breathe the minute you step outside. Or you know, growing up in North Carolina, summers in North Carolina were just like you step out on the porch and then it's like, okay, I need to go change shirts. I'm sweating myself to death. Okay. Let's go around the horn. Stuart, since you were last up and you were just taking a swig, what is, uh, I'm what's... drinking, um, uh, after my five course meal dinner, not, uh, of a hamburger, <laughs> French fries. I'm having, uh, they use cognac. It's the one that has the reason I, got it originally was because it has the cross of St. Lorraine on it. You know, the free right. cross from World War II. Right. And and it's not bad. Okay. That's, it just jumped out at you on the shelf and I said, I'm going to yeah. give that a try. Yeah. Okay. It's much cheaper here in Florida than back in uh, bloody off of Washington. <laughs> I like doubt that. Dan, what are you drinking this evening? What's uh, what's your beverage of choice? Um, Angel's Envy. Your favorite. Uh, out of the bullet glass. <laughs> Perfect. Um, actually, my son brought it over. Um, you know, it's like 
oh, here, Dad, a little gift, you know. <laughs> You've been nursing that bottle for a while now. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Those bottles aren't cheap, so you got to make it last. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I just decided to try a local beer, Kolsch, from uh, Allstadt Brewery in Fredericksburg, Texas. It's not bad. Scott, what are you uh, what are you imbibing this evening? I'm drinking a rye whiskey from Crowbar Distillery. Crowbar. Okay. Local? And it's What's that? Local distillery or Uh this is one I found out in Paso Robos when I was out there for Weatherby for 4 months. Oh, okay. So it's a Paso Robos, California company and uh it is just vanilla honey and caramel it's delicious that sounds dangerous <laughs> yeah it's it's really really nice it's it's <clears throat> it's one of the better rides i've had okay Crowbar. and that's k r k r o b a r funky line over the oh. yeah okay and uh, they, I think they will find a way to ship it to you. Okay. I'm not sure whether Texas will do that, but then again, I had, I I worked all weekend over Fourth of July last year. Yeah. On a on an upgrade, and my project manager sent me a bottle of whiskey as a as a thank you. So. Uh, well, it's you know you you got to order a bottle of olive oil. Hide it with the contraband, right? There you go. <laughs> that sounds awesome. It sounds like something they would do down at the border. <laughs> Steve, what uh, what about you? You're sitting out in the. You're in Virginia. What is the what is the temperature like this time of night on your porch? Uh, the temperature has dropped a bit. We finally had a front come through. It was a hundred degrees earlier today and just miserable, a hundred miserable degrees. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking it's down into the low eighties right about now. And, um, uh, I am drinking some Texas blended mm -hmm. TX blended whiskey. I mentioned this last time you guys this makes up for a lot from Texas. I will forgive you for all of the Dallas Cowboy fans for giving us this whiskey. This is incredible stuff. We have um, some awesome distilleries here in Texas. That is true. Man, and, and, I, and it's not that expensive. It's, you know, out, out here in Virginia, it's almost impossible to find. But <laughs> if you order it from our local ABC, it's about $37 a bottle. Uh Really strong on the vanilla flavors to it. Uh, very, very smooth, almost dangerously smooth. So, yeah, big fan of the Texas blended whiskey. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you like our whiskeys, and I apologize for our Cowboys fans. I can't stand <laughs> yeah. them either. All right, we'll let it slide. We'll let it slide this time. David, how about you? What are you, what are you uh, partaking of tonight? Well, you, you need to explain to them what is Southern House Wine. Southern House Wine. Oh, come on. North Carolina, and you don't know that? It's iced tea. Dan's going to just... Oh, well, okay. Yeah. I've never heard it referred to like that. When we had Southern House Wine, it was not... <laughs> it was not iced tea. It was not iced tea. <laughs> Okay, maybe it's Baptist Southern Housewife. <laughs> I was going like, yes, it's probably Baptist. Um, I was thinking like muscadine wine. What are we? What are we talking yeah. about here? I was thinking a mead or something. <laughs> <laughs> but that'd Can't be more of a wrong. northern thing. Can't go wrong with some good Southern iced tea. It, I had to actually go to a match in Arkansas to get iced, real iced tea, Southern iced tea, when we moved here. Because everywhere you go, you order iced tea, and you tell them you want sweet tea, and it's basically pond water with tea essence. It's not <laughs> good. No. So the, the trick behind Southern iced tea 
is to put the sugar Have into a bag of sugar. the <laughs> Well, no. Oh, I can't stand it when it's too sweet. Um, the, uh, the the trick is to put the sugar into the water and tea while it's still warm. So then yep. when it cools, there's a diff it's a totally different thing than adding sugar to uh, tea that's already cold. So. Yep. Awesome stuff. I grew up on it. My mom used to brew it all the time, and it was like... As soon as I w moved to Texas and got what we call tea here, it was, ugh. I was <laughs> homesick. But went to Arkansas, went to a match, and they had actually a, a their catering company for the for the mid match meal was um, Southern Comfort Food, and it was actual sweet tea. It was the first time I'd had any since we moved to Texas. It was awesome. Then I wanted to sleep for the rest of the match. <laughs> <laughs> a little caffeine uh, this this is really um a decaffeinated version actually because my wife is caffeine sensitive well it was all the it was all the uh it was all that southern it was catfish and fried chicken and barbecue oh, that. and southern comfort real southern comfort food and i just we chowed down and then it was like okay we got to shoot you know six more six more stages and a, one Ugh. more stage in, in and i was just like okay i want to go to the truck and lie down <laughs> <laughs> yeah food come up exactly donnie how about you what are you uh, partaking of this evening uh well it's some rock and rye from the uh, glacier distillery and Okay. It's like we, we we stocked up when we were up there a couple of weeks ago. Rock and rye. I think you've mentioned that before. I think I put that on my list once before. I've had it for you, yeah, but it ran out, so it's re restocked <laughs> now. All right, good. Mike has always got interesting uh interesting choices. Can't <laughs> wait to hear what you got. In and um, now that I've called you out on that, it's probably going to be something utterly mundane. No, not really. This is something that was kind of, it's homemade actually with Everclear. Um, I made mo moonshine with uh, strawberry rhubarb. Okay. So I actually juice the strawberries and juice the rhubarb and yeah. Okay. Add some, add some high octane Everclear to it and let it ferment, let it simmer for a while. And it's really good on a hot day. You've got really bad memories of Everclear in college. <laughs> <laughs> We this all have all bad lot. memories of Everclear. <laughs> <laughs> we were all this in college your, once, this, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this may change your mind. If you like strawberry and rhubarb. <laughs> I swore never again. <laughs> Kevin, what have uh, what have you got? Oh, uh, boy. I'm, I'm a newbie. I forgot to bring something oh, here. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. I've got right, a that's really your homework nice... for next time. <laughs> got a really nice single malt upstairs that's uh from a local distillery the only distillery in iowa so oh, okay uh cedar ridge uh, it's just about 10 miles down the road from here okay do you remember the name of the the name of the rye or is it just called cedar ridge or is that the name of the distillery yeah, the it's the distillery is Cedar Ridge and it's the only bourbon they have. Okay. All right. Well, cheers, everyone. Glad to have you here. Uh let's see. Um thoughts on gun control and uh and Mr. Biden and his uh his wayward son and that ridiculous sweetheart deal that he's about to that he was about to get that fell through this week yeah well it fell through because did you did you hear why it fell through yeah because he uh it wasn't going to uh, clear him from any future prosecutions well right. yeah <clears throat> but that, that's a lie anyway is is there weren't they weren't gonna have any future pro prosecutions they just said that there might be 
so that they could always say, well, there's an ongoing investigation, so they wouldn't have to answer questions to a, to a, a congressional committee. But by actually saying that there is an investigation, that leaves open the possibility. So they, they torch their own little sweetheart deal through, through this whole semantics thing of trying to avoid testifying before a congressional committee. It's well, so, it is just a, I, I, a double layer of justice. I think it goes deeper than that. I think it's going to, I think they're going, I think they're using it to try and um, keep Biden from running again. I think they're going to use it as leverage. Like, Hey, you know, if you, if you run, you know, cause this pushed everything back closer to the election now. And so they can say, it's like, Hey, if you run all this stuff's going to be coming out about your son and not registering as a foreign agent and kickbacks to your family well, they'd, well worked I, the, they'd worked that immunity, though, into his plea deal. They tried to sneak that into the plea deal on the gun charges. And the, the, the judge discovered it and was like, wait a minute, what is this? This is probably not constitutional. And as I recall her saying, it was probably not worth the paper it was written on. Well, was the, her words. The, the gun charge was funny because the, the justice, de- normally in a plea deal, the Justice Department is the one that gets to determine whether or not he's lived up to the, to the uh, standards of the plea deal. So the justice department were... was in on clearing him basically. And well, yes, but they were worried the that over the next two years, there might be a Republican justice department that might turn around and charge him. So they said, well, no, in this plea deal, instead of the justice department determining that it's going to be the judge who determines it. And she said, that's why it's unconstitutional. You can't leave me. I'm in the I'm in the judicial branch of government. Right. The judicial branch can't be a prosecutor, and that's what you're asking me to do. So she caught them on that, and they were they were trying to avoid a Republican Justice Department down the road from turning around and saying, "No, you didn't live up to the terms of the plea deal." It just gets better and better. Yeah. It's this this administration is just absolutely a clown show, and. And the the longer it goes, the more, the worse it gets. The, the the more we've we discover about Hunter and his bags of cash, and apparently threatening everybody with with you know Daddy sitting next to me. That's going to be really interesting with with what's coming up in twenty twenty four because Democrats are kind of stuck with Biden. I mean they. I don't know. They they trotted out Kamala Harris more than usual this last week, which I don't really understand. Are they trying to make her more popular just in case, which is not working because the more I don't even think her, Kamala Harris likes Kamala Harris. Did you hear her talking about AI? It's kind of what did she, how did she put it? It's kind of complicated. <laughs> She's like yes, Kamala, it's more complicated than sitting on the mayor's lap. She is just yeah, yeah. It's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> it might be as complicated as like whose cocaine is in the White House. Yeah, you, you know, we uh, all know whose cocaine that was. <laughs> Everybody in the country knows whose cocaine that was. But and the fact that they won't tell us whose cocaine it was. Tells, tells us exactly us. who's going to <laughs> it, It's still under investigation. But at least now we know that the uh, Secret Service is not capable of lifting fingerprints. That's insane. It's just... <laughs> In order to protect the Bidens, they're willing to basically just completely torch their own credibility. It's just amazing how bad our government agencies are how they don't, corrupt they are to the core. They don't care. No. They don't care because they know that the media doesn't care. And as long as the media never asks a serious question, they'll get away with it. They don't yeah. care. It is completely irrelevant if we all know because they have the backing of, of, a, of a compliant media. I'm, I'm, so, I'm on a soapbox tonight, aren't I? I <laughs> you're absolutely right, too. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That's great because... And I have actually been surprised at the pushback that that 
Corrine Jean-Pierre has gotten in some of her press conferences, even from the, the leftist press, because even they can't stomach the answers that they're getting. Like they want her to come out and say, no, you know, to, to actually deny this or make a statement on that or what, but she won't. And she just keeps saying, we've been very clear, but we haven't been very clear. Or I'm going to refer you to the justice department on that. Like the question she got the other day, uh, Donnie must've dropped it, and he's back again. There's two of him. He's cloned himself. Um, the, uh, the, the she got a question the other day about does the president believe that people who violate gun laws should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law? Hint, hint, you know, alluding to what Hunter's done, and she said, "Well, that's just that's part of an invest ongoing investigation. I will, uh, and which was not the question." I will refer you to the Justice Department on that question. That's not what they asked. They didn't ask about Hunter, and she basically she basically connected the dots for everyone. It's 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 so embarrassing how bad this this administration has become, and some of us saw it from. Well, all, I'm sure all of us saw it two years ago, three years. Well, it's been. God, has it been two years that we've been dealing with Biden since? Oh, my God. We've been oh, dealing gosh. with Biden since 91. And, oh, and yeah, yes, I, he's, he's never been a good too. guy. No, he's been. Buddy off of Biden's been there since 72. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just. He was an incompetent crook back then. Nothing has changed. Yeah. No wonder his kid is so screwed up. Look who the dad is. Yeah. But he's a good Catholic, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Well, that says a little something about how good Catholics are, I guess. <laughs> it's not a very good. Yeah. Well, uh, no, Dang actually, in, they endorsement. they went through a whole lot of, of ups and downs about whether to deny him communion or not because well, of the stand on abortion. The there local are. diocese, him and uh, Pelosi, were denied, and then the Pope's like, "Oh no, it's okay." Yeah, Pope's an idiot. <clears throat> Pope Frankie. Well, gentlemen, I'm going to have to slide on out of here. Today is my 40th anniversary, and you chose to spend it with us. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I I just got to I got to slide back into anniversarying. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. I think we're all gonna have to send his wife flowers. Yeah. Oh god, <laughs> yeah. she has plenty. We need to work on your priorities, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick yeah. word on that. A local radio personality said Neil Bortz said a long marriage is the ultimate status symbol. You cannot purchase it for any price. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Well, con congratulations. Okay. Go, man. go, and, go. And and sign uh, off. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell her happy anniversary from all of us. Oh, congratulations! She she's a pretty good kid, you know. Actually, she's been around for about forty eight years, really. Okay. Um, Wait a minute. You start dating her when she was eight. Eighteen. You, okay. All right. So I was trying to piece this all together. You got to. I was doing years. that math too. <laughs> yeah, Eighteen. Okay, so you were dating her eight years before you got married. I got it. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Finally. Okay. <laughs> you know, don't 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 go the news anchor route and try and pull me into something. You know. <laughs> I don't think we pulled you into anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you hear the, the the audio on this, when this comes out on a little, podcast. Uh, yeah. Oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, have a good evening. Happy have anniversary. Happy we'll anniversary. see you next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. Have good. you seen the shenanigans the ATF is pulling with the uh, eighty percent lowers? Which shenanigans are those? I know there's well, so they, all kinds of shenanigans. What's the latest? It was it was ruled that the that that the ATF ruling banning eighty percent lowers is unconstitutional. Okay. 
Uh, it was sent up to a circuit court uh, for appeal, and it was denied there. So instead of going through the next appeals process, they're going. They're they're seeking an emergency judgment by the Supreme Court to either put in a, a temporary stay so that they can still, because apparently eighty percent lowers are such a danger to society that it can't wait. So they have to keep the ban in place. Um, and if they don't agree to keep the ban in place, that they 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 ask for an emergency ruling on it. So, which I don't understand them going that route. I mean, it's like, what point do you just say, hey, we're, we're not going to win this battle because it's like the current Supreme Court's not going to side with them. No. On they, this. It's like, they need to clarify the wording and get it right instead of keep fighting over the stupidity. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing has been written so poorly from the start. I yeah. mean, er half the stuff in the NFA is just dumb anyway. The whole short-barreled rifles and short-barreled shotguns, and what constitutes a the f you know, firing components of the gun the, that has to be serialized—all that stuff—and to be honest, it needs to go to the legislation and get rid of the ATF. And that would be nice. That'd that would make my nice. life easier. And if they would actually do, but then, but they won't do that because that that endangers their jobs. And their power, so that's not going to happen unless we get somebody in an office who will actually, you know, clean the swamp instead of just t twiddling his finger in it. Making the it only one I've heard that actually has, and and he'd never win right now, but I'm hoping he might make it as vice president, is a uh, Ravik Ramaswamy. Yes, he has. I mean, he's he actually got a has good a plan. plan. He actually has a plan. He's like, we're, we're not going to go in and we're not going to try and close down these agencies. I'm just going to do mass layoffs and then choose which ones I want to rebuild. Yep. And he explained, I remember in that interview, I don't know who he was talking to. He was talking about how he has, was it Jordan Peterson? Maybe might have been Jordan, might have been Tim Cast if you watch him. <clears throat> I haven't seen Tim Cast in a while, but I think that's where I saw him. And he was talking about how, yeah, you can make all these promises about how you're going to drain the swamp. Well, I have actually have a plan, and here's yeah. how I'm going to do it. And I have, as president, I would have the authority to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And he's going to like act like five government agencies on day one, he says, and yeah. here's how I'm going to do it. Yeah, and that's what I like is because he's actually taken the time. It's like, okay, the the president has certain powers, but not other powers. Like he can't specifically target a person and fire that person, right? But he can he do can a mass layoff of the in entire, <laughs> you know, division of the government. It's like, no, this is just a um, what did he call it? A uh, managerial you know layoff decision it's not a you know not targeting anybody we're just you know 50 percent of the people got all... laid off right you know i think personal it's like you're all fired yeah and it's like <laughs> the president has that power and it is you know and it's established that he does have that power he can do those type of layoffs and then it's up to the president to decide if or who they rehire you know right you know, so like, you know, there are certain agencies you like, it's like, well, I just do a massive layoff and there are certain agencies that I just would never restaff. <laughs> so they're, even, they're essentially and dead. And that's something you got to do that first term. You get elected, yeah. you can't wait like Obama. And thankfully he didn't do this, but Obama had House and Senate and yeah. could have enacted very, very strict gun control and didn't yeah. do it. And then by the time the midterms rolled around and he'd lost control of Congress, there was no way anything was going to get passed. And yeah. that's why he started doing the executive orders. If you get a, a president in there who will actually do that and do it up front and get it knocked out, that yeah. would be fantastic. That, that alone makes me consider voting for him. Yeah. Speaking so, but... of which, I'm not going to ask you who, who you would vote who you're voting for but um who has impressed you thus far uh and what do you think the ultimate 
outcome is going to be on the Republican side. Yeah. Yeah. I I am I'm asking a really easy question. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm for Trump and I think he would be even more effective this time than he was the first time. Just because he would no longer have to worry about rerunning. He, okay. He's turned out so he could just do the job. And as far as the competition, I mean, he's the only one that, you know, the conservatives and the people who are just tired of it are really getting behind. DeSantis has just been a flop with, you know, his, his PR has just been a ridiculous flop. And he's not, he doesn't invoke any energy in his speeches. Uh, he's very dull. And it's like... Look, I know you've done a good job as governor of Florida, but you're just not showing it to us in your running. You know, so unfortunately, running for president is not about your actual skill as a as an yeah. administrator or a governor. It is all about popularity, which is why we yeah. get people who are just the worst. Yeah. Um, uh, I I think Rivik is doing a great job of getting his message out and not getting into a knife fight with Trump, which is why I think we could see him as a vice president. Well, he's not in a knife fight with Trump because Trump doesn't see him as a threat. Well, Trump, but Trump he hasn't attacked anything thin, Trump does either. Trump is very thin-skinned, and yeah. he has spent all of his time being stupid about DeSantis instead of attacking Biden. Yeah, well, but then... Rivik recognizes that. And so he hasn't launched any attacks against Trump. He actually right. is like, no, I Trump did a good job. I liked him. And, you know, he supports a lot of his ideas. We And he talks about how they have a lot of the same ideas and we have a lot of the same goals. So he's, I think he's playing a, a very good chess game. Yeah. In that stay, realm. Stay out of the, out from between Trump and yeah. DeSantis. Yeah. Yep. Kevin, uh, in your home state, uh, Vivek, I can't even pronounce, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. Ramaswamy. Got a, Ramaswamy, Ramaswamy got a standing ovation the other day at the, uh, in your state. Uh, what do you think of the candidates and, and where they stack up and how this is going to ultimately shake out? Well, I've been down here in Iowa since 2004. And every caucus that I've gone to, I've picked the wrong guy. Uh, so I'm really not the best to ask. But uh, Vivek has been uh, on the up and up around here. Um, I've actually seen signs in yards uh, for him. Okay. Um, nice. Trump um, did a great job. But... Personality-wise, I, I detest the man. Uh, uh, I guess there hasn't been a lot of really discussion down here yet. That doesn't usually start until the Iowa State Fair. Okay. That's in a couple of weeks, and then things start rolling after that. Um, I hate the junk mail. I, I get three pieces a day. Uh, yep. in the mailbox from different people and it'll get to the point where you get a dozen different flyers in the mail every day so leading up to early january it's a mess uh, just haven't gone to see anybody yet but uh they're they'll be around <laughs> yep indeed mike what do you think I don't know. At this point, it's a crapshoot, in my opinion. I mean, there's. <laughs> the I mean, sort of nice answer. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like the things Trump did. It's just he's he's got to keep it kind of on track sometimes, and I think that's going to be his downfall. Beyond that, there's a lot of things to shake out. Um, I'll be honest with you. It's like I don't really pay attention until we get into fall. Things start heating up. Yeah, but I don't know. It's we need something different and someone to hold their ground. Just don't know who that is yet. 
it'd be or nice if we even if have somebody. somebody who wasn't pushing 80 that'd be great no <laughs> no offense to anybody who's anywhere close to that age but it just seems like i mean watching biden stumble around the stage and and then whatever happened to mcconnell the other day where he froze up paper locked <laughs> <laughs> and yeah between and pelosi's what 82 and then you've oh. got you've got feinstein who's in her 90s who is just not even there at all and they're still keeping her there but we've got chuck grassley <laughs> and we got chuck grassley there's too many on both sides and we just need some younger perspectives would be nice Stuart, i know you i know you're you're uh you've got a few thoughts i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I still have my DeSantis bumper sticker. I do live in Florida, uh, and my DeSantis yard sign. But he has disappointed me uh, in the last little bit. I think somebody cheery would be nice, like Tim Scott. Trump, he's a criminal, and he shitted on the Constitution. So I have nothing to do with him. That's why I won't vote for a Democrat either. They're all the same. <laughs> he, he used the Constitution for his toilet paper. I have no use for that. You know, Tim I had Scott a, would be an interesting <laughs> choice. I, I I've liked what I've seen of Tim. I wish he would. I wish he could gain some traction, and I don't understand why he doesn't seem to. Uh, he's too cheerful. <laughs> we need somebody ugly and and nasty and spiteful to to. No, we don't. We need we need to go the attention. Need somebody who bring positiveness to the country. <laughs> yeah, I think. Not, uh, I, Keep saying those evil MAGA Republicans are uh, those evil Scott Republicans. I don't know. I, you know, I mega MAGA great again is a good thing. It's just because Biden is an idiot and he craps on the Constitution too, like all Democrats. And uh, so, anyway, I have no opinions. It would be nice to have some some newer. Fa I'm glad to see Tim Scott in the ring. I hope he does well. Um, and I like Vivek from what I've seen of him. And if for no other reason that they're he's younger and has some some fresh ideas, younger um, be good. Yes. You know, yeah. Going back to Mitch McConnell and uh, Feinstein, you know what? Or Fetterman. You know, when I had a stroke, I, I retired. I had to, you know, my brain wasn't going to be good enough. I had to get rid of my big pickup because I made mistakes. And a person's got to know their limitations. And these jackasses who stay in because they're there or they run because they, they're, made, they're, they're very impaired, they need to be gone. And people need to wake up. That's the thing. The people in those states need to wake up. Well, with Fetterman, especially, I don't, I don't understand. I, I blame that on his, her, on his yeah. wife. I think the wife is despicable to continue to push him to oh, do Fetterman. what he's doing. Yeah, with that impairment, and this has nothing to do with his politics, but yeah. the fact that he, he like can't him. put sentences together, and she's, and people are still pushing him to run. When they they had an opportunity to replace him with somebody who was probably going to win anyway, Oz was, was a terrible candidate, and they continued to push him, and they continue to keep Feinstein in her position, despite the fact that there's a, if she were to resign tomorrow, there'd be a Democrat in that seat the next day, because you've got a Democrat governor who would pick her su successor. They're so afraid just, of getting too many Cortezes is the problem. Are they afraid of Cortezes or are they, are they like power hungry? I think they're afraid of Cortezes because, I mean, whether it's, you know, any Democrat will help keep them in power. But it's it's the it's the Cortezes who are just absolute morons and wouldn't even, you know, don't know how to govern, you know, at all. I mean, OK, you know, we all hate Pelosi, but at least she knows the, how to play the game. Oh, you're you talking know, about AOC. politics and okay. and govern. Yeah. You know, whereas Cortez is just a buffoon. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I, I have a friend I have a friend that's a Democrat and she would 
she would love to be on the Supreme Court because that way she could be in power until she dies. Yeah. It's just, I'm like, why would you want to be doing that when you're 80 some years old? And she's like, wouldn't it be great? You could be making decisions until you de- until you die. And I was like, that's a pretty power hungry kind of point of yeah, view. That's very yeah. selfish, self-centered way of looking at it. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I kind of look at it as like, they love the power. They love the, they like being in control. I mean, you don't you don't get rich on those on the salaries that they pay you in Washington, but somehow they all do. So, well, a insider trading in is legal for politicians. Yes. Yeah, but uh, so is uh, uh, bribery. But look at yeah. Biden. Well, what's uh, what's his name? Uh, Bernie Bernie Sanders. Yeah. But he wrote in, in, in his yeah his his number one best selling book that I'm uh, you know I would really like to see you know some receipts of who who bought all those books you know <laughs> it wasn't the people you know tell me tell me some campaign contributor didn't buy a million copies of his book and just t- drive it to the dump <laughs> kind of like Hillary's books yeah or artwork by Hunter well, yeah there's that. <laughs> I mean, it's, there really is a politician. It's crap. It, it is, but but the people who are buying it are doing it to ingratiate themselves to the family, right? Yeah. So one of the biggest one of the one of the biggest buyers of Hunter's art is now in the Biden administration, and yeah. shortly after buying the art, was given the job. So it's all a con game. It's all insider trading whether you're talking stocks or whether you're talking about buying art and it's 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 all just trying to use your position to en- enrich yourself so that uh a- at the expense of the american people and it really sucks and it it'd be nice if we could actually get somebody who would drain the swamp and not just talk about it like previous republicans Republican candidates and presidents have said. Um, let's see, Donnie, you haven't chimed in on this this subject yet, and I know Steve's got he's on a roll tonight, so we'll save his his thoughts for last. <laughs> uh, I um, right now I I like the sense. Um, anybody's better than who's in office right now. Yeah. Any of them would be better. Yeah, that's true. Any of, well, except for Chris Christie. Let's face it, Chris Christie sucks. Yeah. So there's that. But it, with the exception I of I don't Chris think Christie, Pence would be any good either. Hey, you talk about a guy who's boring. Oh my yep. gosh. And plus, he's just, he's a politician. I mean, he's just another politician. He'd be George Bush part two or three, I guess it would be now. I mean he did he did govern Indiana so he has he's not like Biden or some of the others who come from you know a senate uh, or a congressional um background but then again so did Chris Christie and yeah and so did George Bush so did George Bush so there's all that okay Steve you've had time to tee one up <laughs> Knock it out of the park to finish this out. Okay. Well, so I mean, it, the, the only the only Republican that might possibly lose to, to Joe Biden is Trump. He's the only one that might possibly lose. Everybody else would win. Any of them would win. Nobody likes Biden, but everybody is psychotic about Trump. That's and really so the Democrats to, have yeah, done yeah. just a wonderful job of triangulating, I mean, all these charges that they're bringing against him are to help him win the nomination. And they're trying to make sure that not only does he win the nomination, but can't win the general election. All of these charges, all of these these different levels of, of government that are charging him with various crimes is meant specifically to make sure that Republican voters are gonna say, hey, that's not fair. You can't do that to our guy. We liked him as president, and we did, and there right. were some good reasons for it. But they, they, they're they trying to make sure that he gets the nomination but can't possibly win the general election. 
and and it is disgusting and despicable. I would love DeSantis. I would love you know uh, Vivek. I would love Tim Scott. Any of those guys would do a great job, but I don't think any of them have even a snowball chance in hell of getting the nomination. And it's because of all of these charges. Nobody's taken any one of these guys seriously. And 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 no, DeSantis has not run a really good campaign so far. But even if he turned it around tomorrow, he's not going to win. He's just not. And it's because of all of these different criminal charges. And, and Republican voters are going to look at that and say, you're attacking us. You're attacking our guy. That's our guy. And he's, he's going to get the nomination because of it. Yeah. I'm afraid you're right. That's the, I mean. Did yeah. I mention that even though I'm in car sales, that my degree is in political science and history? Well, that must make conversations at the lot very interesting. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I keep my mouth shut most of the time. But yeah. In this group, I feel feel like I can at least talk. <laughs> and I rant. I know it. Well, that's fine. That's awesome. Um, and I agree. I mean, I I think with the exception of Christie's awful. Um, Pence is. I'm sorry, but with Christie, I mean, how corrupt do you have to be to be a Republican, avoided, uh, voted to be governor of New Jersey? I mean, that alone just tells you how corrupt the guy is. Yeah. I mean, he's. I don't how, even know how. Why he's Republican how, governor of New Jersey. I mean, oh, yeah, just how much of a rhino do you have to be? Him. And <laughs> And then while Pence may be a good man, he's tarnished by all of the all of the the diehard trump supporters who hate him so even if if he were to win the nomination there's a large percentage i think of the base that would stay home rather than vote for him i like the younger group i like vivek i like descent i would prefer desantis i think what he's done in florida is fantastic um and so, and he's got that, he's got a proven track record of actually fighting against the left and, and not doing it in, in a, not doing it the Trump way that he, he backs everything up with fact and he, he can actually, he's articulate. It, it, he helps. can, and, and you're right. He can not only articulate it. I mean, the guy has a genuine mastery of, of the subjects that he's talking about. He's not just going off the cuff. He knows this stuff. And, he and, has a, and that's and he why has a it's, so, it's so baffling that he just can't seem to get people around him to run a decent campaign because he knows that he knows the issues. Yeah. And he can talk about them better than, than just about anyone right now. I, I love the guy, but man, that campaign is awful. Yeah, he's yeah. he's got a lot of work to do. But he also now has Trump bashing him constantly which annoys me to no end not just because i like desantis but because i just w- what's that old axiom about not beating up on other republicans and reagan that was reagan yeah reagan. <clears throat> bad things about fellow republicans and instead of attacking biden trump is spending all of his time making up names for for desantis right. and talking about his and mischaracterizing his track record in Florida. And it's all because Trump's a thin skinned moron. In my opinion, he, he gets, he can't get over the fact that, that DeSantis is running against him. And so he's got to take him out instead of focusing on what the problem, which is Biden and the Democrats. So even if he were to win, I don't see the, I, I, I mean, things are going to get better, but we're still going to have the same administrative state. We're still going to have the same gun control crap. We're still going to have the ATF. We're still going to have all this junk that he left in place. And, 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 uh, what's the word I'm trying to, the beer's going to my head. Uh, executive orders like the stupid, uh, bump stock ban that we're going to get more of that. For all the good that that Trump did in his four years, and there was lots of good, there's a lot of bad baggage coming with it. And if he gets the nomination, the the whole reason you're you're absolutely right, Steve. The the whole reason that the government 
apparatus, the Department of Justice, and all the Democrats are out to, to hang him is because they want us all to rally around him like like you said, so that he'll be the nomination nominee because I think head to head he probably loses. I agree. I think he's the only one that can lose at this point, and he will. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a circus, but uh, it'll be it'll be interesting. So uh, there, there's a great uh, line that I heard a new part of it. You've heard the the term "not my circus, not my monkeys." Not my circus, not my monkeys. Right. Yeah, but there's a third line to that. Oh. Not my circus, not my monkeys, but I definitely recognize the clowns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I got to write that down. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Very nice. Way to that's it, it, way to bring it home, David. I appreciate that. That is perfect. Way to wrap. That's a great way to wrap things up. Um, guys, I appreciate you doing this as always. It's fun to see you and hang out with you and share thoughts and ideas and catch up. And, uh, uh, I don't know what August has got ahead of us, but we'll figure out a date. I've got eye surgery and all kinds of craziness going on the next month. Oh, Hey, we're getting a roof. So I got that to look forward to, but I got mine several months ago. Yeah, they they finally, for some reason, it took the city a month to to approve the permit to get my roof done, and so that's happening Tuesday. So my cats are gonna freak out. <laughs> All the beating and bang. All right, guys, I hope you have a great uh, a great rest of your weekend. And there's a fur ball there. It's like, I'm not a Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. God bless Have you. Have a good one. Have a great evening. We'll talk to you next month. All, all right. right. Thanks. See you later. For show notes, be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. Check out the Facebook page, The Armed Lutheran, or join our Facebook group, Fans of Armed Lutheran Radio. If you like what you hear, please leave us a comment on our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback or a review on iTunes and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening to Armed Lutheran Radio, a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network.